Oh, oh, mm. oh, yeah, just, oh, it's so wet. Just, oh, just pour it right in my mouth. I'm so thirsty. Oh, God, it's so, oh, oh, more. When you listen to Pearl River Flows, the babble, be sure to enjoy a Pearl River Flow Cola. Pearl River Flow Cola. The cola that you can fuck. Welcome to Pearl River Flows The Babble. I'm your host, Patrick Jerome. Today on Pearl River Flows The Babble, we've got some treats for you today. Um, we got a new sponsor after last week's incident, the Mississippi Skin Council. Uh, we got some lessons from the Mississippi Skin Council on eating. I will uh, personally beg the president to let me be the head of the FBI. We're going to finally... Finally check back in with Alex Jones. And at the end of the night, we've got a special performance. Um, We had um, some comedians come in from out of town, come to Offbeat Comics. uh, And uh, we've got uh, Doug Gillen from that that performance. He'll he'll be on here. And uh, yeah, I think you guys are going to like tonight. It's very relaxing. Very relaxing. And now... A word from the Mississippi Skin Council. This episode of Pearl River Flow is brought to you by the Mississippi Skin Council. Real. Human. Skin. Ah. Tonight's episode of Pearl River Flow is brought to you by the Mississippi Skin Council. The Mississippi Skin Council would like to remind all of B through J infiltrators that human beings eat. It may seem strange to push vegetable and animal matter through the bone knives embedded in the face hole, but tonight we'll be giving you a class. Tune in later for more on eating like a human. Please do not confuse this with the other uh, infiltrator lesson, eating a human. That'll be next week. Thank you from the Mississippi Skin Council. All right, everybody. Uh, sorry about the delay. Anyway, so um, with the, nobody participating in the ARG or buying any T-shirts or donating any money via PayPal, we're um, yeah, we we've been taking on ads. Last week we took on a lot of ads, and I've, I mean, I'm, I took on some ads this week. I'm not proud, but with the current turmoil, I'm uh, or lack of turmoil, I am looking for a job. Um, and I hear that there is some opening. There is an opening at the FBI uh, for the uh, director of the FBI, possibly. And also that I know that probably the FBI and the NSA are the only people who listen to the podcast. So um, I think my chances are pretty good. Uh, So I wrote a letter to you, to uh, President Trump. You guys can just read it to him. I know he likes to get stuff that talks real great about him. And and that's it. So let's see. Uh, Let's see what I got here. Uh, Dear President Trump, I never doubted you. Not one bit. No. So, I hope you'll consider me as your new director of the FBI. With James Comey being fired, that's a good move now. I hope you used your signature, you fired, line on that guy. I know you'll need a replacement. You need a replacement who's a renegade. A renegade with top-notch investigative skills. Someone willing to fight crawfish men. Someone willing to handle citywide issues facing Jackson. Someone who has infiltrated secret bunkers. Someone who has climbed into murder holes with strange beast men. Someone who has snuck into corporate board meetings over and over. You need somebody like you. Somebody that thinks outside the box. Me? I like to think outside the cube. Oh, that's right. Not just the box, which is square, but the cube, which is a cube. Look, use your outside-the-box thinking. Some real outsider logic here. Don't hire some lawman to run your central lawman agency. Hire an outlaw. 
outside the box, outside the cube, outside the law. It's all the same thing. I, now, this is not to say that I do not have experience. I know the X-Files in and out. Like the back of an old hand that I found in a swamp, which we will not investigate. Therefore, as your soon-to-be FBI director, X-Files are exactly what I'm capable of doing. It's what I will prioritize and what I am absolutely sure the American people want. I'm sure they want this far more than they want any investigation of you or convincing people that they should become terrorists or distributing child porn. You know, the usual stuff that the FBI gets up to. Spying on insurgent groups, um, cracking down on protest, terrorizing activists, that kind of thing. I mean, nobody wants the FBI doing that. What they want is me investigating mysteries, paranormal phenomenon. I will get to the bottom of alien abductions. I will find out who in the government is covering them up. I will investigate the Jersey Devil. The, the mutant Jersey Devil, not Chris Christie. Or ghost real? I'll find out. I'll put a stop to any malevolent AI. I'm sure that malevolent AI is the threat that the American people would like me to deal with. Astronauts. What the fuck are they up to? What do they bring back with them from the void of space? Unlike past FBI directors, I will find out. I'm going to tackle the secret human cloning projects. Why are they secret? Are these things humans? Why are they in the basement? Why are they in the sewers? Why make a clone when you could just fuck? Few people can discern the difference between one clone and another. But I can, Mr. President. I am just such a person. I feel like we should have more spontaneous human combustion. So as the head of the FBI, I'll look into it. Why make it so spontaneous? Why not a planned human combustion? I also have a brilliant plan to see if any psychic mediums are capable of contacting us from beyond the grave. Far too often, a living psychic medium will claim to be able con to contact the dead. I plan to see if a dead psychic medium can contact the living. I will get to the bottom of shapeshifters. Shapeshifters could be anybody. Anybody. I alone can ferret out this shapeshifting threat. I will also worry about the possession by the dead. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. So I figure as head of the FBI, I can nine-tenths handle that. Faith healers. Well, actually, there's no joke here. I think we should probably just put an end to that. Um, telepathy. I, I don't trust bald men for just that reason. I feel like I can solve this case with that secret knowledge. Look, Mr. President, this is what the American people want the FBI to be doing they want an FBI director selected for television reasons, just like you were selected for television reasons to the presidency. I think that this should be a plea and a guide for you to select me as the next FBI director, and I should point out that I'm probably just as qualified as anybody else you'll pick, and I haven't committed any atrocities. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Tonight's episode of Pearl River Flows the Babble is brought to you by the Doomsday Clock. The Doomsday Clock has been a project of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, Science, and Security Board since 1947. In those 70 years, this is the second closest to Doomsday, or as we at Pearl River Flow call it, Sweet Relief Day, the clock has ever come. The Doomsday Clock, now available at two and a half minutes to total global annihilation. Oh, man, that was great. Um, that, coming up next, we got something that we've been, a lot of our listeners have been waiting for for at least a week. We mentioned it last week, but uh, today we've got our first ever time travel interview. We've sent FP Jerome back in time with the patented Pearl River Flow time cube time machine. And he's going back to the year 2002 to talk to none other than recently famous person, Alex Jones. Let's take a listen. Alex, man, this is FP Jerome calling from the future. Well, I mean, I'm in the year 2002 right now. Oh, that's really great, man. That's really great. I'm glad somebody is finally getting here from the future. I took a time machine to get here. Uh, it uses time cube technology to get me here, man. Look, so I can't stay for long. That's what all this weird noise is. That's time travel distortion. Uh, we're all very familiar with uh, 
time cube technology and time distortion here on InfoWars, sir. I would appreciate it if you didn't insult my audience by thinking that they wouldn't know something like that. I mean, that's just what you globalists do. You just come in here and you pretend like we don't know what we're talking about. It makes me mad. It makes me so mad. Oh, I just I wish I were going to have to eat, like, I'm going to have to eat a steak after this. I'm just going to have to eat, like, two, maybe four steaks after this. It's just, ah, oh, just, you're, you're pissing me off. But uh, I'm in the vortex now. I'm just letting you know what's going on in the year 2017. You know, um, you are a big supporter of the president these days, the president of the United States of America. Oh, good. I'm glad uh, Ron Paul is finally president now. We've been working really hard, and uh, you know, I'm glad he doesn't have like a shitbag son or anything. But we're we're really, we're really proud of Ron Paul here, and I'm glad that finally there's an American president I can support because I I love this country. You know, I do, I do. I just you know, I just oh, it makes me so mad that the billionaires and the and the executives and the, the weirdos are all in charge. And I don't mean like you good weirdos. I mean, like the incestuous, demonic people that live in golden towers and want to fuck their own children and things like that. It's sick. No, it's not Ron Paul, man. It's uh, Donald J. Trump, the billionaire. That's impossible. The people of America would never like Donald Trump to president. That's a, unless you're telling me that they're all like uh, stupid in the future and I might need to like boost their brain power or something. I Maybe I need to work on that. There's no way Donald Trump's president. Man, just this is too weird, man. This is too weird. Uh, look, I need you guys to stay tuned. Our next guest is going to tell us about how shape-shifting lizard men secretly run the world. Uh, none of this weird shit we're hearing now from this guy that claims to be from the future and saying Donald Trump's president. That's just fucked up. I mean, pardon my language, but that's it, just, it's just wrong. That's just messed up. There's no way I would support such a monster. Yeah, that guy. Now, yeah, and you like him. You you and him are big buddies. He loves you. He gets his information from you. And uh, you're backing him, you know. Nothing but pro-Trump stuff on the website these days, man. Look, I know it may seem like it's going to be hard to get there from where you are today. But, uh, you know, I don't want you to think that you're, like, part of the conspiracy or anything. But, you know, big fan of the president of the United States of America, you know. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I don't have to... Just letting you know, man, yeah, he's uh, going to blow up the military, make it all big, going to deport some immigrants, and, or maybe, you know, they might be U.S. citizens or whatever. They're going to get put into, like, camps and shit, you know. But, you know, you're for it. You're for it. You're all about it, man. You are. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. You're uh, going to make all kind of money selling some, uh, just going to say, hey, selenium, get in on that shit. Make you some, some money, man. Yeah, look, man, I know you might have some questions about what I'm doing in the year 2002 and all. And I could be warning you about stuff, man. I could, you know, I, I could be warning you about jet fuel and, and, and steel beams. And you're going to want to get in on that, man. You're going to want to get in on that. There's these things, this new thing coming up called crisis actors, man. You want to get in on the ground floor there. But look, man, you do you. You do you, Alex. I know you may not believe what I'm saying, but I'm from the future. And in the future, we get fucked up, son. Time travel! Ah, that's just ridiculous. We're not going to hear anything like that anyway. I just, I can't believe that somebody would pull such a prank on me. It makes me so mad. I just want to eat a big bowl of chili. And drink a beer like an American man. Anyway, here I'm, uh, whatever. I'm just, uh, we're going to block that guy's number. We're never going to talk to him again. Man, that is just some that is just some mind blowing stuff. Mind blowing stuff um, from uh, Pearl River Flow and Alex Jones. Um, so we're gonna yeah we're gonna move on. We got a performance from Doug Gillen on June seventeenth at Offbeat Comics. This one was hosted by our premier swamp diplomat Patrick Jerome, but we're not gonna hear from him tonight. Just well, maybe just a little bit. Instead, we're gonna hear from Doug who touches on some topics that I think you will agree definitely fit the Pearl River Flow bill. All right, folks, let's, uh, let's do that. Excellent, 
All right, you guys keep going, keep going for this man. Oh man, that was great. That was great. All right, I I'm I'm just gonna keep this uh, comedy train rolling. Let's bring on our final act of the evening. You guys, give it up all the way from Memphis, Tennessee, Doug Ellen. Hey guys! Oh man, so good. Hey, you guys have been here since like 8.30, right? Oh my goodness, drink. Drink on me. Over there, right over there. Oh my God, give it up for them real quick. They've been here since 8.30. Oh my God. And all of y'all, that's for all of y'all. You guys, thanks. Gosh, Jackson, they told me they were like, hey man, you're going to, this is a comic book shop in Jackson. I was fired up. I was excited. One of my coworkers was like, uh, oh, Jackson. I live in Memphis. And they were like, oh, Jackson. I was, they were like, be careful. Like, bitch, I live in Memphis. Like, what the fuck is... Be careful. And I come down here, and everybody's, like, super nice, you know? And then my coworker kept saying, I'm going to get mugged down here. And at this point, I'm kind of looking forward to it, you know? I'd be like, yeah, the guy took all my money and pointed a gun in my face, but he asked me if I had a concussion before he whip pistol with me, you know? Like, he was just really considerate. And then he drove me right to an ATM, like, showed me where it was, you know, after he... I mean, it was so he could take more money from me, but, you know, like, still, I thought the thought was, was there, <laughs> shit. Uh, give it up for everybody you've seen so far tonight, guys. Johnny, Mandy, uh, Holly, uh, Patrick is fantastic. Wonderful place. Oh, my God, we can't even just, yeah, I'm, I'm Doug Gillen. Uh, Johnny and I, we, we travel from Memphis. We host a show there called The Tuesday Show. Um, I usually try and, you know, say my name when I come out, but nobody seems to remember it. They just go, oh, yeah, schlebby George Michael. He's okay. Like, George Michael didn't die. Like, he just got a job, like, at a Jiffy Lube or something, you know. He's sitting there with his socket wrench, like, tune me up before you go, go. Come on in when your tires are low, low. (laughs) I'm not really that into 80s music like that, man. I'm not really into music that, like, requires some kind of, like, overhyped Biloxi DJ in between every single song, you know. Like, I feel like every bangle song has to end with, okay, all right, this is Ross Turner here on 98, 98, 98. All right, we're just cruising along the coast here. All right, coming up next, we got George Michael. <laughs> what the fuck? I did like a lot of kinds of music, though, man. I love being in a record shop like this. Like, one guy I loved, my first guy growing up, my first concert I ever went to, I'm not kidding. I know you guys can tell from looking at me, Brian McKnight, man. Brian McKnight, absolutely my first concert <laughs> that I went to. I loved Brian McKnight as a kid, you know, like in middle school and stuff, like 90s music. I loved it. But when I got older, it was like it was a little different because I started listening to that song, started back at one. You guys know that song? Yes. But it, it kind of ruined the illusion a little bit older, you know, when I got to you, know, you guys know the song, right? It's like one, it's like a dream come true. Two, just want to be with you. Three, you know it's plain to see that you're the only one for me and four repeat steps one through three hang the fuck on (laughs) at the end of this thing he says if i ever think my work is done i'll start it back at one well i don't think i can trust you with that kind of commitment you can't even get through your own fight part list in one chorus brian mcknight (laughs) this is garbage Stop listening to that. I got into heavy metal, man. I got into metal. Any metal heads in here? A couple? Okay, one guy's like, yeah. You seem like the least enthusiastic metal head that has ever lived. <laughs> I'm just like, any metal heads? You'd think somebody would be like, yeah, fucking up the irons, man. And he's just like, hi. Like, I'm, it's kind of my thing, you know. I cut off all my personality with my hair. That's okay. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> I loved heavy metal, man. I was being an Iron Maiden, you know, up the irons, right? Because if you listen to Iron Maiden concert, man, they're like, metal guys should write every single advertisement ever because they can get you fired up about something in like half a second, right? I listen to this live Iron Maiden album and this guy just in the middle of a song goes, this next song is dedicated to everyone who supported metal in South America. This is Blood Brothers. I was like, shit, what have I done to support metal in South America? (laughs) It's probably not enough. Iron Maiden 2012, that's the new hit YouTube video, guys. That's coming out, that's a... Okay. But I did, man. I loved heavy metal. My parents told me, they said I had to stop listening to it, right? They said, if you play an Iron Maiden record, it has got satanic messages. It's going to make you want to kill yourself. I was like, I don't hear that. They're like, no, if you play it backwards, you have to play it, you know, you have to spin it the other direction. I still didn't hear it, but I realized that there was a record like that about 10 years later when I played a Nickelback CD forwards. <laughs> and that's when that shit really happened, you know? Like, I survived, but 
It's a close call. My parents didn't have to spend the rest of their lives looking at this photograph. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. But one thing I always love from start to finish, always, 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 man, from the day I discovered music up until now is Fleetwood Mac. Man, I cannot get enough of Fleetwood Mac. Again, very polite rock fans here. They're just like, yes, we're, we're, yes we, we agree. It's a good band. Fleetwood Mac, man, I love Stevie Nicks. I loved everything about them. They were this band. They were like just some blues band, like your buddy's blues band. They kept changing members and stuff. And they hired Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham from Los Angeles. Stevie's the girl. Lindsey's the guy. It's 2017. I think we're all okay with that, right? And they hired these guys. And they made two of the best albums ever. And they all had sex with each other in the meantime. It created a whole Wikipedia page full of rumors. It was just fantastic. And I got to see Stevie Nicks in Memphis about a month ago. It was, it was great, one of the greatest experiences of my life. Stevie Nicks is 69 years old, okay? She's a grandmother, and she does not talk like a metalhead between songs, you know? It's, it's a little more extensive, you know? She'll be talking about the time she played ping, goal, ping pong ball, ping pong ball, <laughs> She'll be talking about the time she played ping pong with Prince, and then the next thing you know, she's like, yeah, I thought Hurricane Katrina was devastating when I looked at the ocean from my window on the beach. And she's like, okay, Stevie Nicks, that's all right. But it was emotional for me, man, because I loved her so much. She would do just one little thing that would just take you right into it. They were playing Gypsy by Fleetwood Mac, and I cannot tell you how emotional I got seeing a 69-year-old woman in stilettos turn around once. And just doing the song, she just goes, and I was crying, you guys. I was bawling my eyes out. I look over at my wife, her mascara is all fucked up. We're into it. It's a great experience. That's why she talks for 45 minutes between songs. you got to catch your emotions, you know? At one point, she played this love song that you could tell nobody really heard before, but everybody was on board. It was beautiful. And when it was over, she said, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for letting me share that with you. I wrote that song in 2005 about the greatest love, love story I've ever known, and I know any of us have ever known. Of course that song is about Edward and Bella. I looked at my wife, I was like, is Stevie Nicks fucking talking about Twilight right now? Like, is that... She was! My wife was like, just calm down, Doug, as long as she's not talking about the second movie. And I was, next thing out of her mouth, just, when I saw that second movie, I'm like, fuck, fuck, Stevie Nicks, let's just. Like, she wasn't paid by Warner Brothers to write this, okay? It wasn't like an official soundtrack thing, okay? She saw the movie and was inspired to write it. I saw one of those Twilight movies. I was inspired to also kill myself. Like, that was kind of <laughs> Twilight 2, Breaking Doug, you know? That's what they called it, in my head anyway. I mean, the second movie is the greatest love story I ever told you guys. You guys. You know the movie. It starts off where, like, Edward and Bella are together now, so we've lost any of that will-they-won't-they they tension. And then he takes her to a party, and she, like, pricks her finger, and all the vampires are, like, into her suddenly, you know? And, vamp and Edward, being, like, the mature adult 17,000-year-old individual that he is, decides he can't deal with the jealousy and just fucking leaves. She gets so upset, she sits in front of a window for three seasons. Not like three TV show seasons. Like three seasons of the globe circling around the sun. You can see the seasons changing in her window as the camera turns. She misses the opening to Face Punch, which sounds like it's probably the new Die Hard. So that sucks. Tries to kill herself two times, doesn't make it. Then all of a sudden, things start looking up, right? She meets this guy named Jacob. He's got great teeth, cool hair got a great bod and his mom likes her too and by the way his friends don't want to eat her so that's a plus and then Edward decides he wants to come back he wants to see Bella again right but he can't just go back because again he's a very mature 17,000 year old individual so he has to ask fucking permission from his goddamn parents who are they yeah the Anne Rice Illuminati goddamn vampires over there in Italy or some shit and he goes over there and he's hanging out with them and they're just like yeah well I guess okay you can date a human just don't sparkle too loud in the sun or something and then he leaves and he goes and sees Bella and he's like hey Bella I'm back I want you back and she's like okay I will get back with you on one condition he says what's that she says if you turn me into a vampire because 20 six-year-old Kristen Stewart is really killing it right now, but there's kind of an age gap on women in Hollywood, and if I hit 32, this is going to go way down, so I need some of that immortal juice right the fuck now. 
And he says, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And they go to Jacob and tell him they're breaking up or whatever. And Jacob's like, why would you leave me for him? Like, he sucks. We've been through the whole movie of why he sucks, right? And she says, he's going to give me exactly what I want. And Jacob's like, are you? Are you going to do that? Are you going to give her exactly what, you, what she wants? And Edward's just like, yeah, man, I'm totally going to give her exactly what she wants. Just completely, totally going to. And that's the whole fucking movie. This is not the greatest love story ever told. No, if there's anything, this is a cautionary tale against abusive relationships, okay? Like, that's... So I thought, why the shit would Stevie Nicks care about this? And then I thought, well, it's basically the history of Fleetwood Mac, just with less werewolves. That's all that is. It's just... It's right there. One Fleetwood Mac fan in the, in the back is like, hell yeah. yeah. That's what's up. That's cool, man. Yeah, I, I'm, this is just so... You know, it's such a crazy time right now like you be in a place like this you think about oh man i'm around a bunch of star wars fans and people who love adult swim and all that and that's great and you feel you feel it one and then you walk outside and you realize that just a year ago twitter said they were going to boycott star wars because it had a black main character and was committing white genocide like white genocide and you're a star wars fan you're worried about genocide like where the fuck were you at the destruction of alderaan you know like come the fuck a billion voices cried out and were instantly silenced and you didn't say shit on Twitter. <laughs> Fuck off. I feel like Darth Vader's a much less intimidating villain like without the mask though, right? Like if he's just like some fat at-home racist, you know, like when he takes everything off, he's just wearing like a wife beater and some imperial sh board shorts or something, you know? Like he's taking, <laughs> he's taking apart like Cheetos with the force so he can eat them. Getting into his mask. I feel like he'd have really outdated views. Like, if you really got to know him, you know, he'd be like, they're letting people use any bathroom they want on Alderaan now. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> oh, you see these Ewoks getting married? <laughs> Can't even put the imperial symbol on a flag outside the courthouse anymore. This is some bullshit! Fuck Darth Vader. People are crazy. They're crazy. Crazy people, what do they believe in now? They believe that anything Donald Trump says is real. They believe that Hillary actually knows how to use a computer to send emails. You know, what do they, they believe crazy shit? 69-year-old grandmother, come the fuck on. <laughs> what was the time when, like, crazy people just believed in, like, ghosts and aliens? You know, like, I miss that. That's what I was into. I always like believing in aliens because I saw some sometimes, you know, when I drank a lot of absinthe. Like, there they were. Their eyes were just as dilated as they were in the films, you know? Like, boom. I like to think of it. I thought about it. I was like, aliens, they have to be drunks, right? Like, think about the evidence. Think about everything you've seen. Every time you see a flying saucer, it's like all wobbly, you know? It's not flying in a straight line. And I knew aliens had to be drunks the minute I found out about cow, uh, uh, with this intergalactic cow tipping, right? This cow abduction. Like, you have an intergalactic spaceship. You can go anywhere in the universe. You don't go to the Eiffel Tower or Mount Everest or whatever. No. You go to a field in Montana and turn a cow inside out. This is not sober behavior. You know, this is. You watch E.T., it's obvious. Oh, my God, how obvious. That drunk motherfucker. You can only say, like, two words at a time. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> I feel like they probably cut down E.T. from, like, the original cut. Like, in the original cut, maybe he just talked all the fucking time like he was a real chatty drunk. <laughs> and they just cut it down to, like, the two words after he had too much. Like, before that, he's just like, hell yeah. <laughs> Put me in the basket, dude. <laughs> dude, get that blanket right there. Yeah, no, right. Yeah, I'm a little cold. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> but no, seriously, dude. Put me in the basket. Okay, you're going to put me. You're going to... Uh. Elliot, okay, Elliot, you're going to put me in the basket. We're going to pedal. We're going to pedal, Elliot. It's going to be awesome. We're going to pedal. We're going to pedal towards that ramp. We're going to go past the fucking moon, man, Elliot. We got to do this. I feel like the extra, the, the original uh, title for E.T. wasn't the extraterrestrial. It was E.T.U. So for extra turn up. <laughs> That's what he was the whole goddamn movie. You guys ever get so drunk that like you leave something where it totally shouldn't be like you leave a shoe in a bathtub or some garbage? I figure like with the aliens, they're so drunk. That's just how Stonehenge got made. You know, they were just like, where's our limestone? I don't know. Scotland is over here. I feel like that's all the pyramids are. They're just big drunk alien Jenga boards. 
You know, like they just came down and they were like, hey, those Egyptians look cool, man. Let's party with them. They got drawn animal bodies on animal heads on people bodies, man. This is awesome. They build a big drunk alien Jenga board, but like they get too tired to actually play it. So they leave and they come back. And they're like, where was our game? I don't know, man. And they go over to Mexico and they just build another one. <laughs> they keep doing this. They go like to Indonesia. They keep building drunk alien Jenga boards. And then they come back like a thousand years later like, man, I'm kind of tired of drunk alien Jenga. Let's. Let's go over there to Easter Island. Let's play Guess Who, man. That'll be fun. <laughs> That's where they have the giant heads. It's cool, though, man. The, the Trump thing, uh, God, it, it drives me nuts. Does it drive y'all nuts? Are we, like, on the same page here? Like, yeah. I mean, Hillary, what the fuck did Hillary Clinton do? Like, are you, you oh, you're going to run for president? Great. Who are you going to run against? Donald Trump. All right, so we've just placed press start on presidential very easy mode. <laughs> like, you'd think. She was just too fake, man. She wouldn't be herself. They're pandering all the time. She went on that, you guys know The Breakfast Club, that show in New York City? Oh, my God. Yeah, right? Yeah, she went on The Breakfast Club in New York City. This is, a, this is a urban radio program, right? This is three black co-hosts she's sitting in front of, and they ask her like a rapid-fire series of questions, and they say, what's one thing you keep in your bag all the time? And she says, hot sauce. Like she's about to get information. Like, come on, fuck you. It's not appropriate. Guys, I'll tell you something about myself. I love Popeye's fried chicken. I think Popeye's fried chicken is one of the greatest things ever created in the history of the universe. I have the toilet scars to prove how much I love Popeye's fried chicken, okay, is what I'm telling you. But if I went on The Breakfast Club and I was sitting there and they asked me, hey, Doug Gillen, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? I'd be like, well, you know, Panera is pretty good. Like, that's a fun place to go. <laughs> if the next question was, what's your favorite fruit? I'd just be like, not watermelon. Yep, uh, that one is not appropriate. I don't know how she got here, man. It, it, and it, it's crazy because there's like all this hate out now and like stereotypes are coming back like in full, not that they ever went anywhere, but they're coming back in like full force. Like I'm married to a Puerto Rican wife, okay? I have a Puerto Rican wife and, you know, she, it's, it's all good all the time, but people tell me like, oh, she's got to be really fiery, right? And, she gotta, and I'm like, no, nah, man, I have totally deserved it every time she's thrown a plate at me, okay? Like that's just... She said a little bit of mustard on her hot dog. You know, just a little. It's a definite amount. And we've been married two years. It's been going good, you know. And it's amazing that we've been married that long because I am not like a romantic guy anymore. The minute I gave up on Brian McKnight, all that went out the window, just like that. Like, I didn't do a, a sunset picture on Instagram or anything, nothing like that, you know. When we got married, we were just sitting on the couch watching this uh, television show, and uh, this commercial with a lizard came on, right? And I just turned to her and I said, uh, baby, I figured out a way we can save a lot of money on car insurance. And we did, you guys. That 30 bucks a month is really keeping us together, you know, because it's like you get in a fight, you're like, ah, oh, should we get divorced? But I like keeping the diamond member status, you know, like that's important to me. We're going to keep that along. She's great, though. I mean, it's great being married to somebody who's a little different than you, you know, because she'll come home sometimes, she'll talk to me in Spanish, she'll do different things. Like, we don't even have to make uh, anniversaries or, or, or birthdays a big thing because we're always, she's always doing nice stuff for me, and I'm always doing nice stuff for her. Like, the other day, uh, she went out and she bought a whole bunch of flowers, uh, you know, like, like flowers you have to plant, like plants, and for, for herself. And then for me, she bought a shitload of gardening equipment, okay? <laughs> like, it was, it was very thoughtful. And I was sitting there playing video games, and uh, she just looked at me. She said, hey, you know, you want to plant these flowers? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it in a little bit. You know, I'm just I'm playing Injustice 2 right now. And she's like, oh, okay. Levántate y plante esas flores. Eres tú que voy a poner en la tierra. Like, I love you too, baby. Like, thank you. That's, that's wonderful. In, in case you're trying to catch up, that means uh, get your ass up right now and plant these in the ground, or else you'll be the one going under. <laughs> very, very kind, my wife. She's, uh, she's from California, Puerto Rican from California, so she doesn't know a lot about Memphis, doesn't know a lot about Memphis, and she's always telling me, like, hey, Doug, you, you're from Memphis, tell me about Memphis history, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got you, I can tell you all about Memphis history, man, I know all of it, I know all of the Memphis history, all of it, you guys, every single bit, this guy's like, yeah, you can tell us some when you get around to it, okay. So she was the same idea. We're driving down the road, and she says, tell me some Memphis history right now. We're coming out of Target. I say, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that Popeye's right there? She's like, yeah. I was like, that used to be a Burger King. <laughs> I know all the Memphis history. All of it. People like to say she's fiery. I told you that before, but no, it's me, you guys. It's not, not the best thing to admit, but it's me. I'm the one who loses the temper. I don't know. We got people in relationships here, a couple people. 
Yeah, okay, back there. All right, sir. Sir, what's your name, sir? Melvin. Melvin. All right, so did you guys, when you guys fight, does somebody lose their temper every now and then? They look at each other like they're going to consider their answer. They don't fight. Okay, guys, give it up for them. The first couple in history to ever not fight like unicorns back there. You find unicorns in Jackson. Amazing. <laughs> she said, because he knows I'll cut him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right after me, you'll see uh, your feature act. <laughs> but I'm the one, man. I'm the one who loses my temper. You know, I'm not proud of it, but I did it the other day. We were fighting about something. You know, I, I forgot about the diamond member status, you know, and I did. I lost my temper. I was just like, hey, you know what? Suck my dick. <laughs> and she did, you guys. <laughs> like, not even, like, ceremonially. Like, they're just putting it in her mouth and, and being done to prove a point. No, the entire job, start to finish, and when she finished with that job, she proceeded to continue with her argument, which she won because it is incredibly hard to argue with empty balls. You know, that's just, you're just like, oh, yeah, babe, whatever you, whatever you want, we're all good. It was fun. It's fun being married to somebody different, but the modern climate, it's like, ah, and these things happen, and then it draws me back into, you know, the real world, the world outside of here, the world we all have to deal with all the time. And uh, that was happening just the other day. We were driving, uh, we were walking back um, from lunch, and a lady drove by in her car, and she just said, hey, go back to Mexico. I was like, thanks for reminding her about that Cancun trip I canceled last year, asshole. Like, that's a, some bullshit. She can't go. She hadn't been, all right. How do you respond to that? What, do you throw a globe at them? You know, like, say, go back to school? Like, what's the, what's the response? I don't know, man. Uh, but I think, you know, there, uh, sometimes we got to be nice to people. Sometimes we got to be nice to people. But sometimes uh, if somebody's coming up to us and they say, hey, man, you got to move, uh, you know, maybe instead of just being nice, we say, no, you move. The nerds in here will get that line is from Captain America Civil War, <laughs> which I think in the Trump administration is a documentary now. <laughs> I want to see Captain America Civil War, man. That's, that's been my favorite Marvel movie so far. I know everybody's got a lot of opinions. I know it's controversial to state one, like, Ugh, but I love Captain America Civil War, man, because I had such a great experience seeing it. I went into that movie. I thought I was the biggest Marvel fan there, opening day. I had on my Captain America t-shirt, right? And then I was not at all because there was an eight-year-old boy standing next to me dressed up full Captain America regalia there with his dad who was dressed exactly like the Black Widow, you guys. It was amazing. He was decked out, and we went inside, and this little kid was so excited, he would shout at the screen the entire time, you know, and when he heard that line about somebody saying, no, you move, he took that advice to heart, and there are a lot of times in that movie afterwards where somebody says, hey, you're wrong on this one, Cap, and then Cap has like some kind of witty retort, but I never got to hear it because every time a character would say, hey, you're wrong on this one, Cap, that kid would just go, no, you are, like, fuck, yeah, all right. <laughs> I wasn't even mad. Like, I heard this, and I thought about it later, and I was like, what a great way to relieve stress, you guys. I'm going to help you. you guys are going to try it with me. We can say this all the time in our regular life, and it'll just fix everything. I'm going to show you guys. Here, do it with me. One, two, three. No, you are like that. One, two, three. No, you are. Perfect. Let's say you're at a bar. Definitely not this bar, but you've been there pretty late, and somebody says, hey, man, you've had too much to drink. What do you say? Yeah, fuck that. Stay there all night, right? Let's say you get a phone call, and they're like, Mr. Gillen, you're three months late on your rent. What do you say? No, you Fuck yeah. Click, hang on, stay there forever. Let's say you go to a comedy show at a comic book shop, and somebody says, hey, man, you were pretty funny. What do you say? No, you are. Oh, you guys are really sweet. Thanks a lot. I'm Doug Gillen. All right, guys. Here's your host, Patrick Jerome. All right, everybody. Give it up for Doug right now. One last time. Look, everybody give it up for all the comics you've heard tonight. You guys are a great crowd. So as the last favor, just, just clap for yourselves. Just, uh, yeah, not as enthusiastic. I understand. It feels weird. All right, but look, everybody, we've had a wonderful night tonight. Uh, you guys keep, keep looking on Jackson, Jackson Comedy. We have website, Facebook, all that junk. You can find us online. We will announce all of the shows and things like that. So please pay attention. We have comedy shows. They're always this good. 
Eh, okay, maybe not. But no, this was a great show. You guys were excellent. I'm glad everybody came out tonight. Give it up for your comics one last time. And you guys have a wonderful night. Be extra safe and try to try to sell somebody some old gas cans or something on your way out. You know, let's all contribute to the economy. Good night, everybody. so wet just oh just pour it right in my mouth i'm so thirsty oh god it's so oh oh more when you listen to pearl river flows the babble be sure to enjoy a pearl river flow cola pearl river flow cola the cola that you can fuck